Gamers of Reddit, what are your favorite games where your choices as a character actually mattered? The Banner Saga, you play a woodsman tasked with leading a band of refugees through a war-torn wasteland. Every choice you make has consequences, every battle has casualties. Let's say you meet a band of men on the road, they tell you their village was raised by the enemy, they're cold and hungry, taking them on might bolster your ranks, but you now have more mouths to feed. And who are they anyway? Do you know? Are they really grieving townsmen? Or Bridgens posing as such? You might only find out days, weeks down the line when they finally turn on you. Still, can you really abandon people in the snow, knowing they'll die? I didn't know the right answer at the time, and what makes the Banner Saga such an experience is that even now, I still don't. This, my favorite game where your decisions actually matter. I managed to get to the end and found that I got an important character killed. As a result of this I couldn't finish the final battle. That is a proper consequence of being a daft leader. Kota. You get to choose between being a light side or dark side Jedi and the character Revan was awesome. I can't believe no one else has said this yet. I loved near the end when it comes time for your teammates to choose their sides. Think take a very bad turn when you're playing dark side. The Stanley Parable. There's a narrator in the game whom you can ignore whenever you want. This results in a hilarious and very meter turn of events depending on the choices you make. I can't play the Stanley Parable for another 4 years. There is an achievement to not play it for 5 years. Dragon Age Origins. I at least felt that my choices mattered and I really liked the game back then. But choice matters games are very rare now. Moro Ind. It's like Skyrim. But a nor with a max level of 21 in any school though magic can't become leader of the mage faction. Skyrim has better overall gameplay, but Morrowind just kicks the crap out of it in terms of depth. Morrowind has quests like this. In order to advance in the mages guild I need you to collect the membership dues from one of our members. She's refusing to pay and is hiding in a cave in the Ashlands. So you are given directions to this cave and told to drum up 1000 gold. You now have a choice, you can just raise 1000 gold, hand it in and simply say that's the dues, and never even go to the cave at all. You can also find the cave and convince her to hand over the money, which can be done through a bribe, which basically amounts to giving her a discount and shipping in your own money. You can also kill her and get the money that way. It's stuff like that where the game doesn't simply insist that you need to go to the cave and get item X out of the chest at the end but is perfectly content to let you interact with the content the quest presents in whatever manner you see fit is just great. Even just the fact that you have to explore the world to find those places and you navigate with your map and a bunch of written instructions that reference landmarks is incredibly rewarding somehow. At multiple parts in the game you're told to find a nomadic tribe of Ashlanders with basically no instructions other than just having to explore the Ashlands till you run into them, and that becomes your adventure. Deus Ex. Each one of them put me in this trance and their endings were extremely tailored to your play style and choices. Fallout New Vegas. It gives you different choices depending on your SPECIAL. I don't think Fallout 4 does any of that. It doesn't even have skill points anymore. Just special and perks. For the younger people who haven't seen or played it yet, black and white. This is a god simulator, where you are the benevolent god overseeing a small group of people. You can help them advance and be a good and merciful god, or you can become completely evil and be malevolent. It's one of the first games I ever played where your choices mattered, and it's also really fun throwing small animals across the map. Black and white. This is a god simulator, where you are doing your best to build houses for everyone while a giant ape cow tiger takes great delight in literally crapping all over everything. <laughs> Dang this is late but I can't believe it hasn't been mentioned at all. Arcanum, of Steamworks and Magic Obscura, absolutely ridiculous degree of freedom in that game, and the storyline was massive. I thought it was the coolest rendition of steampunk that I'd seen so far, and yet, yeah, if your character's intelligence was too low, all of your speech options made you sound like you had a speech impediment. It's almost been 6 years since I've last played it, might have to fire that baby up one more time. Love Arcanum. I do a full playthrough once a year, p. Probably Dragon Age. Origins. They really fricked up DA2. 
Nothing you did mattered. Never trust a mage in a Bioware game. Fallout 1. Decisions mattered. And you couldn't slack off. You had to get crap done, or the people in your vault would die. Plus, if I remember correctly, if your intelligence was too low you couldn't understand what people were saying. I'm gonna laugh if people say a telltale game, as good as they are, the choices clearly don't have a large effect on the story. Tales from the Borderlands had an element at the end that judges all decisions you've made to significantly change the climax. No spoilers but anyone that's finished it knows what I'm referring to. Persona 3 Stroke 4, specifically 3, you can either be man's best friend, a total jerk, or a combination of both. You can also have the game's end very early if you make some mistakes, and characters can live or die depending on how you're feeling. Catherine, also made by the Persona team, is another one of my favorites. The choices you make determine how the game ends and what Vincent's inner monologue says. Also, without getting spoilerific, Catherine has some really interesting endings. You know what the sad answer is going to be? Old shul RPGs like Fallout or Baldur's Gate and the likes. These games were never marketed as your decisions will completely change the game, but even minor ones could have huge impacts. Wanna be a dong and kill everyone? Just do it. Wanna rob everyone? Just do it. Wanna set a whole town on fire? Just freaking do it. None of the your choice matters telltale like games, which are actually marketed that way, deliver on that front. And how could they? They're narrative driven short stories with a bit of choose your own adventure mixed into it, but ultimately they have very specific endings. The reason if there is a season 2 or 3 coming. Ultima Online when it had a notoriety system circa 9899. If you performed criminal acts you'd become flagged as a criminal, which meant anybody could attack or kill you at will. If you piled up a string of criminal acts you could end up a scoundrel and were freely attackable by any other players. If you killed people you would eventually turn into a murderer and were no longer able to enter towns. It was really fun since everything always had far reaching repercussions. Eventually got removed altogether since it wasn't very new player friendly. It was also really easy to abuse as lots of acts were flagged as criminal activities. Which would oftentimes lead to dozens of people attacking you for something as simple as rummaging through a corpse. Had they spent the time to fix the problems it would have been a neat way for players to police themselves. Unfortunately they deemed that too much work and completely did away with the system within a year or two of release of the game. Bioshock. To be fair, your choices don't matter that much. They do influence the ending though, and certain character interactions dialogues, but they actually felt like difficult choices, at least the first time. More aligned. PC. Hey I like that guy's armor. Kills him for it. With this character's death, the thread of prophecy is severed. Restore a saved game to restore the weave of fate, or persist in the doomed world you have created. PC. Well crap. I'm doing an Iron Man's com game right now with all the troopers named after my buddies. Bernadette missed a freaking 95% shot that would have saved Patrick. R.I.P. Patrick. Don't your choices always matter? Choice 1 defeat the boss. Choice 2 repeatedly jump into spikes for no apparent reason. I rest my case. Dang. You have a point. Lakes of fire exist for a reason and that reason is clearly to stand in. XEOM. Enemy unknown. I just had to sacrifice my tactical ablative armor I mean rookies to get that sweet. Sweet exalt data and it's not like my satellites are coming from the production line soon. Dungeons and Dragons. I'm currently playing a sequel to a chaotic campaign I played in a year ago. Holy crap. My DM has taken all my horrible decisions into account. It's freaking awesome trying to clean up my own mess. It also sucks because I never realized how fricked up some of my decisions were. Four words. Magical experiments on orphans. My first DND campaign I was as smart as like her her I'm gonna swim as far as I can swim bet your map doesn't go that far but I had rolled a monk with emphasis on athletics endurance types so DM was just like welp you sure can swim far and let me swim until I died. Plan escape. Torment. What can change the nature of a man? A textbook case of how to get limited voice acting to do a lot for your game. It helps that everyone they picked was exceptional. The personality they all brought to the characters really cemented how much I gave a dang about what I did. 
even if I'm not sure how much difference it actually made. The Witcher 3, the Baron quest in particular. Originally written in Polish, in the late 90s, there are 8 books, 7 of which have official English translations or quite serviceable fan translations available online. Three of the books are short story collections, while the other five make up a saga that eventually leads into the beginning of the Witcher game. They serve as a prequel to the games. That is, the games do not cover the same material, but sort of a continuation of that storyline. I don't know how many of the Witcher games you've played, so I won't talk too much about specifics. The books follow Geralt and Ciri mostly, although Yen plays a significant role. The biggest difference in my comparison to Martin is that Sapkowski actually finished his saga, and at no point during reading the books did I feel he was lost, which is not something I can say about Martin's last two books. Every portion, every action, every character feels well considered. The world is incredibly detailed. It focuses around political themes, both the politics of the northern kingdoms and their tenuous interactions with Nilfgaard and how the various races themselves interact. The cast is diverse, and very well written. Every character has a motivation, a flaw, and the relationships and interactions are believable. Sapkowski does a very good job at appending common fantasy tropes, such as how vampires are handled, without forcing it. It all feels very natural. Moreover, the universe draws a ton from folk tales and legends of European and Slavic origin, modifying them in creative ways that are interesting. If you've played the games, you'll see a ton of familiar names, and the behavior of the characters is quite consistent between the books and the games, with one or two exceptions. CDPR overall did an incredible job at capturing Sapkowski's world in the games, and the books are wonderful fantasy on their own merits. If you're interested, I would suggest starting with The Last Wish and The Sword of Destiny, the two short story collections that precede the main series, which starts with Blood of Elves. Kerbal Space Program. My first attempt at a moon landing was a great success, until I realized that I did not have enough fuel to make it back home. Even though it was a sandbox game I still didn't want to lose my brave astronauts. I had run out of fuel because I had a sloppy landing. I created a new lander that was lighter and more efficient so it could take the two kerbals home. It was also remote controlled so that was nice. Sadly I spent too much fuel again because it was difficult to land my second craft next to the first. So I put my second lander in a stable orbit around the moon. Thankfully I had some kind of foresight and had put a docking port on lander too, so I had to send a third craft to bring them home. Basically 2 hours of gameplay turned into 10 because of a few decisions I made early on. There are way more crazy KSP stories out there. Late to the game, but the first time I was literally blown away by the consequences of a choice I made in a game was in Baldur's Gate 2, in 2000. I had previously played and finished Baldur's Gate 1. For those in the know, you can meet Drizzt, a major D&D character, and you're supposed to help him fight off some gnolls, which he can easily dispatch without your help, but I digress. There were ways to actually kill Drizzt, although it was freaking hard, and take his weapons, one of which is arguably the most powerful weapon in the game. Fast forward to BG2, I imported my final save from BG1 and continued playing. Several weeks later I emerge from some dungeon and my party is accosted by another party. It's Godam Drizzt and his entire party of adventurers, and he's freaking pee that I killed him and stole his sword a while ago. I had to fight the entire party for survival. In short I was just completely blown away by what happened from a choice I made in a previous game. Nowadays, this isn't all that remarkable but back in 2000 this was pretty amazing. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.